Hey everyone, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the pursuit of wealth through home from MJ Stocks, Crypto Assets, and Interviews. Today's Friday, June 9th. Hope you're well. Happy Friday. And in this video, we're going to be discussing a media article here that uh, basically was titled, Is it time to change the MJ Act here in Canada? I think we all know the answer to that. But before we get to it, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live, getting real close to that half a million view mark on the channel. So first and foremost, thank you so much to the community. I really do appreciate the support, all the people that support me along the way. Definitely wasn't easy. And like I said, I really do appreciate all each and every one of you. So just take a look at this. This was the, uh, the monitor in my elevator today. And uh, I was coming back from the gym and in the sauna and I was like, oh, wow. And I got my phone out real quick and snapped a picture. So apologize if it's not very clear, but uh, yeah, I was, I was just like, wow, this is something I've been preaching about for a while now that it's time to, you know, we need change and it's time for us to, we the people to speak up and let people know, uh, you know, our representatives or elected officials in our area that we need change. It's been almost five years that we've been recreationally legal here in Canada and there's still so many limitations with regards to packaging and labeling and marketing and taxation being the biggest one. And we also have 280E tax code in the US, which we know Curely said that, you know, the, the founder and, and executive chairman, Boris Jordan, said that they'd already be paying a dividend if not for 280E tax code. So let that sink in for a second. They paid over $340 million to the US government. I'm not saying that we don't need to pay the, the government any money here in Canada or in the US. I'm just saying it doesn't need to be that high and think about the, the possibilities and, you know, the, the amount of, uh, you know, revenue that these companies would have and then potential for dividends. Uh, so actual value for shareholders, right? And we know that there's just been absolutely no value for shareholders. We're all getting shafted here because the fact that, you know, we're the last ones to to get help, helped, right? Because they're they're trying to stay afloat. These companies are trying to stay afloat. Yes, they can do better and, and you know, maybe, uh, you know, uh, right size their operations and make it a little bit more profitable and get better margins. But it's hard to get those margins when there's an oversupply here in Canada. Obviously, the industry wasn't as big as it is going to be. And I would say that's mostly because of regulatory uh, you know, just re laws and regulations that are just hindering the the industry and it's making the black market thrive, especially like the 10 milligrams per edibles and per pack and 30 grams per order at the store. The drinks finally increased. Like there's been, there's just been so much nonsense and it's time we need change. But this was in my elevator. Uh, like I said, just contact your representatives, let, let them know that we need change. But it said, is it time for, um, is it time for change for the MJ Act? And Absolutely, it is. And there's a link here. If you just go under my page here and click on community, you can see that page uh, or that post, sorry. And then you can see that uh, web page link there. If you go underneath the, uh, I'll also place it in the comments and in the description of this video. But here's the article. I went and searched it. It is City News Everywhere, uh, which is Vancouver. And you can see here it's titled, Is It Time to Change the MJ Act? And this is by the big story and analysis as well. And they have a podcast that's 28 minutes long. Uh, you can change up the speed too. Uh, you can listen to it a little bit quicker if you don't want to spend 28 minutes. But essentially, I went through it. I listened to it all, and they didn't really mention. They mentioned a lot about you know social, um, you know injustice and criminal justice and things like that, and uh, basically you know getting a criminal record, how that shouldn't um, be the case, and it's really messing up people's lives. While I agree with that, uh, one of the biggest things for me is the taxation. It said that anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of company. Uh, revenue here in Canada is being paid towards taxes and some of that's very high excise taxes. I did a video saying that uh, there's over, I think it was over $200 million or somewhere around $200 million in unpaid federal excise taxes here in Canada. So not only is can, is the Canadian government the biggest beneficiary of legalization of MJ here in Canada, they're also the biggest creditor for these LPs, right? There's over a thousand licensed producers here, which is just not needed. We're probably going to see many different uh, mergers and acquisitions and consolidation in the space. I even mentioned that, you know, we could see a potential merger and acquisition of Tilray and VFF. And I made a video on that. If you haven't seen that, I go over my speculation. Again, that's not confirmed, not to spread rumors or anything like that. I just give my thoughts and opinions on that. But like I said, I do think that we're going to see a lot more mergers and acquisitions. We're going to see Fire and Flower just went through the Insolvency Act. So uh, again, we're going to see more and more mom and pop shops, especially in retail that go you know, by the wayside and they're just either insolvent or, you know, just point blank bankrupt. And then we're going to see tons of licensed producers as well. Those small licensed producers who just can't meet up with excise taxes. So they do talk about taxes at the end here. 
Uh, but that, for me, is the biggest thing. And again, we can blame the these producers as much as we want and say, I can't believe they can't figure out how to make money. Um, but the th- problem is, is a lot of the industry was overhyped, right? And again, the Canadian government is really hindering the ability for them to make money. So yes, it, it, the onus is on the LPs themselves as well, because there is some profitable LPs and some profitable MSOs, but the it's not just one or two companies here in Canada. Like it, the, the whole industry is struggling, and that has to do with you know the massive competition. There's price war going on, right? Uh, they continue to have to lower the prices because of oversupply here in Canada. I think it was like 1.5 billion uh, grams or something like that, oversupply. So again, they keep having to lower that price in order to not just have to write off and, and dispose of of, of different assets and things like that, right? So uh, this oversupply thing is really hurting. And then the the limitations from the from the government and taxation, right? These excise taxes and this high taxation. Yes, the governments need to get paid, but do they need to get 30 or 40% of companies' revenue? Like that's really hurting their margins and their bottom line and their profitability, right? So if we can just, uh, you know, and the federal government here in Canada has said, Justin Trudeau said it's time for the federal government to get on board and uh, start to support the MJ industry. Like I said, it's been almost five years. We need for, we need change. Now's the time. We the people. Yes, it's the producers to a certain extent, but I would argue that it's the Canadian government that needs to get their acting together. They're the biggest fe- beneficiary from a taxation and uh, and, and pulling in money from this. Um, and they're the ones hindering it the most, right? And they're the biggest creditor for these for these companies with these high unpaid federal excise taxes. So we need to, to start to support this industry. And like I said, reach out to your elected officials and representatives in your area and let's make our voices heard. And uh, we're already starting to see some movement on 280E in the US as well, with some states starting to exempt some of that. But here's the article here. So currently Canada's federal government is undertaking a comprehensive review of the legis- legislation that legalized recreational MJ. While the basic aspects of the act are expected to remain la- largely unchanged, the review presents an opportunity to improve the system and make it more fair for everyone. Akwasi Awusu Bempa, Associate Professor of Criminal Justice at University of Toronto and co-author of Waiting to Inhale, MJ Legalization and Fight for Racial Justice, says legalization lacked measures to repair the harms of MJ-related convictions. I think the biggest oversight was really the lack of acknowledgement of the impact that drug prohibition and MJ prohibition had on Indigenous, Black, and other marginalized communities, period. So again, while I agree with that, that that definitely, you know, and there's some companies in the US where some of the some states where a portion of their their revenue and uh, and their profits go towards, you know, schools and things like that in these in, in communities that were affected by the war on drugs. So I think that's a great way to go about it. And you know, the government's like I said, especially here in Canada, just raking it in. So maybe they need to start putting some more of that towards, right? Like the, the federal government definitely has to get their piece of the pie. They're going to get paid first. We know that. But do they need to be taking all that money, right? It's it, it's time to support this industry and give back to the people who need it most. And especially uh, shareholders as well. You got to have them in mind because we know that we've been shafted, right? And that we're the last people that 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 companies are, are concerned about, right? Because they need to stay afloat. And then the government's just been sitting there twiddling its thumbs, sitting back with its feet up, getting all this money, and then now they're the biggest creditor, right? So now they get all these federal unpaid federal excise taxes, hundreds of millions. They're going to come after these these companies. There's going to be tons of bankruptcies, tons of insolvencies left, right, and center. And uh, pretty soon they're going to start coming after this. But I think with Fire and Flower, with over 90 stores, like a couple thousand employees, them going insolvent, uh, we've seen this time and time again. Alifia uh, as well is struggling. Uh, merger there. So again, we're starting with Red, White, and Bloom. So we're starting to see this time and time again. And again, I, I think that this could be a wake-up call. But various aspects of the legal MJ industry, including the pardon process, licenses, and overseeing boards, resemble the days of prohibition in one way, a lack of racial justice and the inability to provide true amnesty to individuals who deserve it. Will Canada's review address these issues and implement change? So again, check out that, that audio, that podcast. Let me know what you think. I'll drop the link in the comments and in the description. And it's also on my uh, my YouTube page, under the community page, and under the, the comments of that that post. Uh, but it is time for change. And like I said, uh, you know, here in Canada, uh, the biggest thing for me is going to be taxation. But we, we know that a lot of our names are down 80, 90 percent. Most of the names that are down over 90 percent uh, are in Canada. Some of them are down 99 percent from February 2021 and all time highs. If we take a look at Tilray, Tilray was a daily bear flag. So I did a video on this one as well. I said Tilray, I do a live stream on that one. I think I did. Let me just see here or maybe not. So... Tilray Brands, bear flag, 124 USD. So I said what we needed to see in order for that to confirm. And in that 
in that video, I said if we lost 163, we would confirm it. So we lost 163. Today we hit 158, so we're confirming it. And the measured move, you just take the uh, the high to low there, and then you measure it out to the 0.32 fib extension. And anything under 201 was it possible for a daily bear flag, and it's targeting about 124 USD here on the Nasdaq. So we could, from current levels, we could still drop another 20%. So just be aware of that. CGC also confirming a daily bear flag as well with a target of about 61 cents. OGI, uh, not yet confirming it, but the more names that start to confirm daily bear flags, the worse it is, and the more that we can potentially see it across the sector. Hexo dropping down over 10% today. I'm going to do another video on that one with the discount between Tilray and Hexo, but essentially uh, Hexo vote will be on June 14th for uh, the approval of the, the deal. Uh, but we're starting to see more and more bear flags, and like I said, it could get worse before it gets better. Uh, don't be surprised if we drop another 10 20% on some of these names. But like I said, it is looking promising here into the end of the year where we could see the MJ Review Will Act here in Canada. That could help with product labeling, uh, you know, social justice and racial justice systems and things like that, and pardons and criminal records, all that stuff. Uh, we could see distribution. We could see, uh, you know, labeling and packaging and taxation, all those things, hopefully marketing as well. Uh, we start to see some leniency there and really start to see the federal government here in Canada to support the catch up and support the industry, like they said. And then, like I said, what I think is really going to knock us out of this bear market is either the MJ Act review here in Canada, some positive changes there. We could get legalization of medical at some point. Uh, you never know before the end of the year in the U.S. And then we could get HHS come back with a decision. They could potentially reschedule or deschedule. And then we could see safe banking, which we know I did a video on that one as well uh, the other day. A key Senate committee vote MJ banking bill will be in the next two to three weeks. And I think this has a very high, high chance of passing and then uh, uplisting to the NICE and the NASDAQ. So that would obviously create some massive, massive hype in the space. And like I said, we need change. We need change in the U.S. We need change here in Canada. And the fact that companies are down 99, you know, some 80 percent from all time highs or, you know, February 2021 highs or down 90 percent. Like I said, most of the LPs here in Canada are down, you know, somewhere from. 95 to 99% from February 2021 highs, right? And now's the time where we could potentially see some major catalysts, in my opinion. So going into there, let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, I'll drop the link for that podcast and that article in the, uh, the comments below. Uh, but always love hearing from you. We'll continue the conversation in the comments below. Have a great day. Happy Friday. Hope you have a great weekend ahead. Like the video, share it, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.